Welcome to Uniting Business Live. Greetings from the United Nations Global Compact in New York, and thank you for joining us from all around the world. I'm Tolu Olubumi, your MC and host for today's UN Private Sector Forum. This is the first of three events that we have planned for you, including tomorrow's Global Compact Forum and Wednesday's SDG Business Forum. You can follow all the action right here and on social media using the hashtag Uniting Business. Although traveling to New York in person is impossible right now, we are thrilled to have you here on our interactive event platform. And I encourage you to take some time over the next three days to use its many exciting and innovative features, including the event chat, which is located on the right side of your screen. Be sure to say hello to the other attendees and mention where you're from. We've made it easy to connect with your fellow attendees. You can see them in the attendee tab, also on the right side of your screen. You can send private messages and even invite them for video chat. The networking section is in the navigation bar and it enables you to connect over video with the other attendees and make new connections. You can even share your contact information. Give it a try, you might just make some new friends. There is also an expo area. There you can definitely visit and find our 15 sponsors who are showcasing their sustainability work, hosting their own live sessions and showing all that they're doing to help the United Nations. Be sure to use the links to find more information on each of those companies. Also in the expo area, you will find the UN Global Compact Studios featuring information on our Target Gender Equality Initiative and the UN Global Compact Academy. So as you can see, we have worked hard to put together an innovative, engaging and informative virtual event. So please take time to explore the full range of opportunities to learn, engage and network over the next three days. Even though you may be far apart from us, we are united in the business of building a better world. Now, let's get started. In a few minutes, we will be hearing from the UN Secretary General, but to open the Private Sector Forum, it is my pleasure to introduce the CEO and Executive Director of the UN Global Compact, Sanda Ojiambo. Thank you. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, business leaders and friends from all around the world, greetings from New York City. I am truly delighted to welcome you to the UN Private Sector Forum and day one of Uniting Business Live. And as we mark the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, we at the Global Compact are honored to host these three days of important discussions on the continued imperative of uniting business for a better world. Uniting Business Live provides an opportunity for leaders from business, government, and civil society to reaffirm their commitment to the UN's mission and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. More than that, it's an opportunity to shift discussions so that we can all move from policy and commitment to tangible actions and outcomes. Together, as business leaders, governments, and civil society, we must transform business models and economies so that they are more just and more inclusive. We must do this to ensure that we leave no one behind. Seldom, if ever, in its history has the mission of the United Nations, and indeed the mission of the Global Compact, been more challenging to fulfill, nor has it been more crucial. Around the world today, in developed and developing nations alike, we're witnessing an unsettling rise in corruption, nationalism, polarization, and civil unrest. We are witnessing a loss of trust in institutions, including business, and we are seeing an erosion of fundamental freedoms and the rule of law. And in the midst of this global pandemic, the situation is compounded by the existing challenges of climate change, economic uncertainty, systemic racism, and a retreat from international cooperation. In response to this moment of disruption and uncertainty, 
the UN Global Compact recently called on the CEOs of our participant companies to show their support for peace and security, human rights, and sustainable development. They have answered our call to mark the 75th anniversary of the UN and the 20th anniversary of the Global Compact by signing a statement from business leaders for renewed global cooperation. This statement is a resounding endorsement of inclusive multilateralism. In no uncertain terms, business leaders have stated that cooperation must cross borders, must cross sectors and generations for us to adapt to changing circumstances. In the course of just one month after we issued the statement, it has been signed by 1,294 CEOs from large, medium, and small enterprises in virtually every industry and every region of the world. We deeply appreciate this resounding commitment to global cooperation at a pivotal time for the UN and for the world at large. So I'm very proud today to present the signatures of these CEOs to the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. We will have the privilege of hearing the Secretary General's response shortly. The business leader statement was developed by the UN Global Compact's Action Platform on Peace, Justice and Strong Institutions, whose work aligns with and supports Sustainable Development Goal 16. And as our team embarked on drafting the statement, we also interviewed 60 senior executives from around the world. These business leaders, along with thousands of others, believe that good governance is the foundation of good business. They say that companies must not only ensure that their businesses are in order through enhanced corporate governance, but that businesses must also support enhanced global governance. That means modeling ethical leadership in their organizations. It means taking a stand against corruption ensuring fair and ethical supply chains and tackling systemic inequalities. And it means partnering with government, civil society and others to strengthen institutions, laws and systems nationally and internationally. Collectively, we need to move from commitment to outcomes by keeping the focus on the implementation of concrete actions by business. Our recent leadership surveys show that across the UN Global's Compact, 10,000 plus participating businesses and 3,000 non-business participants. Support for corporate sustainability is at an all-time high. More than 90% of participating CEOs say that it is central to the future of success and their business. However, there is a lot more to be done. Only 48% of CEOs say that they're integrating sustainability into their operations. And just one in five believes that business is playing enough of a role in achieving the sustainable development goals. There's still a gap between awareness, commitment, and action. Today's forum and the events of the next three days will engage CEOs, government leaders, UN agency heads, and distinguished guests in a high-level dialogue on a renewed action agenda for the private sector. And in the spirit of multilateralism that gave rise to the United Nations, we call for authentic and courageous leadership and global cooperation now more than ever. I know that together we can meet this historic moment. Please join me now in viewing this brief film about our statement from business leaders for renewed global cooperation before we hear from the Secretary General. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Over the last 75 years, the United Nations has tackled the world's greatest challenges. We, the business peoples, recognize that peace, justice, and strong institutions are beneficial to the long-term viability of our organizations and commit to demonstrating ethical leadership and good governance, investing in addressing systemic inequality, building partnerships to strengthen access to justice and promote accountability and transparency. In the spirit of global cooperation, we call on governments to join us. Now is the time to realign behind the mission of the United Nations. Over 1,000 CEO signatories, over 100 countries around the world. One statement, one United Nations. We are in this together, united 
in the business of a better world. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, business leaders, friends. It is a pleasure to greet this year's United Nations Private Sector Forum. I welcome and appreciate your dynamic engagement in realizing our shared vision of uniting business for a better world. That vision has never been more important. I'm also grateful to the United Nations Global Compact and its new executive director, Sanda Ojiambo, for hosting this forum. Sanda brings the leadership the Compact needs right now to build on past successes and address the crisis we face, the most severe pandemic in a century, an economic downturn on a scale unseen since the birth of the United Nations, increasing inequality and the existential threat of climate change. The Compact has an indispensable role to play, the same one it has played for the past 20 years, bringing businesses together as a powerful force for the benefit of business and the transformation of society. Only by partnering with the private sector can we successfully tackle the climate crisis, systematic inequality and racism, declining trust in institutions and other long-term challenges that the COVID-19 pandemic has intensified. Recovery is our chance to get things right for the future and to address the world's fragilities. Nowhere will this be important, more important than in overcoming climate change and steering the world onto a safer, sustainable carbon neutral path. That is why I'm encouraged that so many of you are joining today's forum and this week's other United Business Live events. I also thank all of you who have signed the statement of support for renewal global cooperation. Building a more equitable, inclusive and sustainable world means integrating the Sustainable Development Goals and the 10 principles of the UN Global Compact into your business policies, practices and value chains. And it means using your considerable influence to persuade governments that the path of global cooperation is in everyone's best interest. If 2020 has taught us anything, is that our collective well-being depends on, well, on the well-being of each and every one of us, including the poorest and the most vulnerable. Equality, inclusiveness and sustainability are not only moral imperatives, they are the keys to a peaceful, healthy and prosperous future. And in that spirit, I wish you a productive forum. I hope that your discussions will lead to concrete steps towards the world we all want and urgently need. Thank you. Secretary General, thank you for those words of encouragement. We look forward to your official presentation of the UN 75 report a little later in the program. But now it is my pleasure to welcome another champion for sustainability, the Prime Minister of Norway, Erna Solberg. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted and honored to, for the opportunity to address the UN Private Sector Forum. First, I would like to say congratulations and welcome to the new CEO and Executive Director of the United Nations Global Compact, Sandra Ojiambo. We meet against the backdrop of the 75th anniversary of the UN, the 20th anniversary of the Global Compact, and the fifth anniversary of the Sustainable Development Goals. And while we have accomplished much, we are painfully aware of the long path ahead as we start to recover better and stronger from COVID-19. The 17 Sustainable Development Goals and the 10 principles of the UN Global Compact is the roadmap for governments and businesses alike through this crisis and towards the future we want. But getting through this crisis and back on the path towards the SDGs will require cooperation and sustained commitment also from the private sector. Because the task is formidable. We must reduce carbon emission. We must uh, secure health and sustainable food production. We must ensure high environmental standards in industries, transport and trade. And we must strive to create jobs and enable sustainable economic growth across the world. But first and foremost, we must get through this current health crisis. This is a global challenge that requires a global solution. And the best way to win this battle is through the development of an and distribution of a vaccine. In this endeavor, collaborating with the private sector is absolutely essential. The major 
economists, the market shapers, the pharmaceutical industries, and the multilateral organizations must all work together towards this goal. I urge the private sector to continue to contribute resources, expertise, and innovation to these efforts. It is in our common interest to get our economies back on track as quickly as possible. However, getting through this crisis will not be enough. To achieve the ambitions set out in the SDGs, we need healthy and sustainable oceans to provide more food, more energy and more jobs. Two years ago, I convened the high-level panel for a sustainable ocean economy together with the president of Palau. In December, we will present recommendations on how we can protect our oceans at the same time release the great economic potential they hold. A recent panel commission analysis on the ocean economy and COVID-19 show that the oceans have the potential to address some of our most critical challenges, such as mitigating climate change, delivering economic recovery and feeding the world. Input from business sectors are, is vital. We need to come up with innovative solutions and new business opportunities, and to trigger and implement the action needed to achieve ocean sustainability and blue growth. The work of the UN Global Compact Action Platform for Sustainable Ocean Businesses is important in this context. So, dear all, the COVID-19 pandemic has thrown the world into uncharted territory. With grave consequences for public health and the state of our economies. But this is also an opportunity to build back better, and greener. Realizing this ambition will require sustained and active engagement from businesses across all sectors and regions. Businesses must choose to be a part of the solution by adhering to the principle of do no harm, by protecting decent work and equal opportunities, by applying sustainability principles to both core business and supply chains, by paying taxes and following international standards and guidelines. But more than this, to reach our goals, we need to harness the capacities of the business sector. We need to need the new technologies and your ability to innovate and adapt. So I encourage you to seize the business opportunities that lie in the sustainable development goals. By doing so, business becomes an uh, indispensable part of the solution. Knowing that you will continue to support global cooperation and be a force to be reckoned with in our common endeavor to build back better gives me hope. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prime Minister, for opening our private sector forum this year. Our next speaker is the Vice Chair of the, Unite, of the United Nations Global Compact Board and the Senior Vice Chair of Standard Chartered Bank Group Nigeria, Bola Adishola. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, business leaders and members of the public, it is indeed my pleasure to make some opening remarks at this United Nations Private Sector Forum and the first day of the Uniting Business Live as we celebrate the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. This platform provides an opportunity for leaders of business, government and civil society to recommit to the UN's mission and as a matter of fact to move from commitment to concrete action. The COVID-19 crisis has brought to the forefront the importance of strong institutions and the burning need for a more inclusive multilateralism and global partnerships. Inclusive multilateralism is about active dialogue across every sector. It is not only about governments, business leaders, or international institutions. It concerns every sector of society, including businesses, workers, academia, and activists. It is about sitting together at the table, exchanging ideas, deliberating on issues, lessons learned, and preferring solutions. Indeed, it is about action. We all must come together to play our part to ensure that no one is left behind. So what can companies do to support multilateralism? I would say the first thing is to align with the Sustainable Development Goals. 
The SDGs provide a unique opportunity for everyone to come together to achieve a common goal for a better world. The private sector has an important role to play in ensuring the aspirations of the SDGs are realized. And this can be achieved by one, implementation of responsible business and investment practices in areas essential to achieving transformational change and ensuring environmental and social sustainability. Engagement with the public sector and society to share expertise and improve systems. And three, support for smart corporate social responsibility with a focus on reaching the most vulnerable populations with high quality products and services. Companies must pick the goals that they ha can have most impact on. A business may not have the capability to implement all of the 17 goals into action, especially at once, but might be able to successfully implement some of the goals immediately. However, one must note that a positive contribution to one goal does not compensate for negative effects in another. For example, a company focusing on climate change but violating gender equality or human rights. In addition to active alignment with the SDGs, one expects to see cooperation across uh, sectors and geographies. Companies must embrace cross-sector collaboration by working together on a national and regional level to achieve mutually beneficial improvements toward the common goal to make the world a better place. The third and critically important uh, role is transparency and accountability. Companies must incorporate a due diligence process to their operations and processes. They must also be ready to report transparently about the company's positive and negative impacts on the society. These factors will contribute to the creation of a partnership that is aligned, cooperative, and accountable. The role of the UN Global Compact is to support businesses and governments and the UN to work together towards an inclusive multilateralism. For the past 20 years, the UN Global Compact has been building a global movement of sustainable companies and stakeholders to create the world we want. Now, we need the right kind of leaders to take this movement to the next level. A good number of leaders have answered our call by signing a statement from business leaders for renewed global cooperation. And I would like to use this opportunity to warmly congratulate Sander and the UN Global Compact on getting on board. So many companies to show their support for multilateralism through that statement. As a business leader and as vice chair of the UN Global Compact Board, I have worked closely with the Compact for many years, and I see the Compact playing a special role in bringing together companies, civil society, governments, and the United Nations. The Compact does not just bring businesses to the table with the UN, it creates a platform for all sectors of society to come together. This is indeed the kind of inclusive multilateralism that we need in order to create the world we want. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adeshala, for concluding our opening session. Now it is time for our first high-level panel discussion, which we're calling Leading with Courage, a chance to explore the kind of leadership we need to address the many global crises we face and advance the sustainable development goals. Our moderator for this conversation is the founder and executive chairman of APCO Worldwide, Marjorie Krauss. 